Okay, so right here I'm doing an absolute value equation. Now, you'll know it's absolute value if you see the absolute value brackets. These are just straight vertical lines and they really just denote the absolute value of something. So here I've got the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3 equals 7. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what x is. I want to figure out what x is. So what number, if I put it in the place of x, will make this statement true? So the first thing that I do when I do any absolute value equation is I try to get the absolute value by itself. In other words, I want to make it so that this absolute value right here is the only thing on the left side. So that means to get the absolute value by itself, I have to get rid of this plus 3, okay? So my first step is I want to isolate the absolute value. Isolate the absolute value. Okay, so if I want to get rid of this plus 3, I have to do the opposite of plus 3. I have to do minus 3. But you got to make sure you do it on both sides or they won't be equal anymore. So I do minus 3 on both sides and then I see what happens. So over here, 7 minus 3, that's going to give me a 4. And then over on this side, this plus 3 and this minus 3 cancel each other out. So they cancel each other out. Now, the only thing left on the left side is going to be x minus 2 inside of that absolute value. Okay? So we've just isolated the absolute value. And now the second part is, we want to take this x minus 2 out of its absolute value brackets. But in order to do that, we need to break this up into two different equations. So we're going to break it up, break it up into two equations. And I'll show you how to do that. So whatever's inside the absolute value is going to come out. So this x minus 2 is going to come out, and I can set it equal to 4, but I can also make it into a second equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the absolute value, but I'm going to make the left side the same and make the right side into a negative number this time. So this is going to become a negative 4. Okay. So now I've got two different equations I'm trying to solve. I have this one on the left side and this one on the right side. And notice the only difference is I made it so that the right side is positive right here. And I made this one so that the right side is negative. So we broke it up into two different equations. Okay. Once you get to this step, whatever number you have on the right side, it could be positive or it could be negative and you have to find both of them for it to work. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve both equations for x. Solve both equations for x. Okay, so doing the left side first, I have to get rid of that negative 2. And to get rid of the negative 2, I have to do the opposite of minus 2, which is adding 2. So if I add 2 to both sides, what happens? Well, 4 plus 2 is going to give me 6. Negative 2 plus 2 are going to cancel each other out. And I'm just left with an x equals positive 6. Okay? So that's my first solution, x equals 6. The next thing I want to do is I want to solve this one for x. I'm going to do the opposite on both sides, so I have to add 2 to both sides. And once I add 2 to both sides, we just see what happens. Over here, the negative 2 and the plus 2 are going to cancel. The x is going to come down. And negative 4 plus 2, that's going to give me negative 2. So that's my second solution right here. So notice we have two different solutions. x could be 6 or it could be negative 2. And once I find my two solutions, I put it in a solution set. So my fourth step is going to be 
put it in a solution set. So I take both of those numbers, I put them in the set, and then I close it up. Okay, so what if I wanted to check my answers? Basically what I would have to do is, I would have to do it twice, right? What I would have to do is, I would have to put 6 in for x and see what happens, and then I would have to take negative 2, put it in for x and see what happens. So let's try the 6 first. What if x was 6? Well, I would have the absolute value of 6 minus 2 plus 3 equals 7. And I just simplify everything I can first. So 6 minus 2, I know that's 4. I still have this plus 3 and this 7. The absolute value of 4 is positive 4, right? Doesn't change. So I get 4 plus 3 is 7, and indeed, 4 plus 3 is 7. So this actually works out quite well. Okay, so that's x equals 6. And then over to here, we can try x equals negative 2 and see what happens. So same way as last time, I let x be negative 2. So I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2 plus 3 equals 7. Negative 2 minus 2, we know that's negative 4, so I have the absolute value of negative 4 plus 3 equals 7. And now at this point, I can take the absolute value of negative 4, and the answer would be positive 4, because the absolute value can never be negative. So I get 4 plus 3 equals 7, and then at the very end, 4 plus 3 does equal 7. So the two sides equal out. Okay, so that's how you check your answers. These absolute value equations are always going to be solved using these four steps. And I guess you can call it five steps if you wanted to check your answers at the end. So check answers. That would be my fifth step. Okay? Absolute value equations.